uh, try to increase the complexity and then you learn a lot. Uh, straight away jumping to a model like this and trying to do, uh, you would not understand what exactly you're trying to uh, arrive at. So in this uh, demo, uh, it's not like a simple straightforward, like you can just import the model, mesh it, put the load, and you follow, you have the results. Uh, you have to also define how the layering system is also, uh, like a composite has got layers. As I said that uh, you put one layer of uh, resin, one layer of uh, fiber, then that's how they are made. In the same fashion, uh, that has to be also incorporated into the ANSYS uh, model building. So the overall process would look like uh, the building of the CAD model, how we use the CAD model. Straight, it is not uh, straight using of the CAD model, but we have to reuse uh, it into ANSYS environment by uh, term called defeaturing, or you can say to simplify. That's the most in, uh, easy way to put it. Uh, then going uh, with different um, options of meshing applying the loads, and then validate the results. This is how the simple step of you would do it in any component. This is how the uh, process would uh, follow. I was fortunate that I was able to do the half cast, this, uh, uh, how the loads from the blades will come in, and uh, what all the boundary conditions that has to be put, what kind of machine that has to be done. So each component, it keeps varying. So I was fortunate that I was able to do the tower model analysis. Uh, that's model is different from model uh, people get confused uh, also this uh, mainframe structure that is holding all these components we have to do a lot of uh, design iterations to make sure that we are complying to the weights what we are expecting and we do the same process again and again with different load options so i'm just showing today only the massive cover so uh, getting into the step-by-step uh, approach, as I uh, said in my contents, that's the same thing what we do. Uh, for example, the model development is done using the CAD model. You import into the environment, do the defeaturing, apply the material properties, as well as the layer composite uh, uh, details as well. Coordinate system also plays an important role, how you are applying the role, what is your coordinate system. IEC has one coordinate system, how the orientation of these uh, natural cover or the loads are applied. So in which coordinate system you have to do those things that is also defined. Then you go to contacts. So contact is also another case where, for example, there is an interaction between these two. So if you take that, so how is the contact behavior? Is there too much of pressure distribution varying? It's not very, very uh, critical, but then that is how uh, the contact is um, important. For example, in this case, like uh, uh, you put uh, bolts across uh, the whole assembly. So you have to, you don't have to simulate all the bolts, but then you can simulate uh, almost like 80% of the bolts are then in its place. And some, let's say 10% is missing. Still with that, applying a pretension and then how the contact is between the uh, top nasal cover body to the bolt, then to the uh, next adjacent surface, then to the bottom cover, how it is interacting, that is also to be defined in detail. That's how the contact is important. Then we come to mesh methods. We have solid versus shell. Um, definitely, I directly would like to ask the question here, why? Uh, what is the necessary of a shell uh, mesh method and why not solid in all the cases? Um, is there any, do you, uh, does anyone know about this? Why, in what, uh, in what criteria shell element has to be used? So a machine would look like something like this. So. The question is why is, uh, shell meshing has been used and uh, if the thickness of this is 10 mm, what do you think that uh, the size of the shell element size would be? You can take time, you can directly write the answer on the chat. Uh, if let's say that I have given you a 10 mm cube uh, rectangular piece, which is as length as this, like looking like this, similar, and if I had asked you to mesh, 
what is your first important consideration and the second thing of in terms of the sizing of the uh, shell element you can answer it any time you like um, okay going forward after meshing it properly uh, we apply loads that is fourth and moment whenever load is mentioned it's fourth and moment it could be together or it's also like fourth along with the uh, center of gravity uh, its own weight and then also include with bolt and without bolt uh, with ribs and without ribs this is how basically first it is tested and then you have to apply the loads uh, as i will walk you through um, in this, I had hardly seen that there is a fatigue analysis is done uh, unless it is very critical uh, that the loads are very much transient in nature. Uh, there is not much of a load except wind which keeps varying, but you don't put a lot of uh, varying wind. You only consider extreme cyclone cases that's in like 50, mm, uh, 50 meters per second wind applied uh, as a worst case load. So as I uh, discussed about different kinds of loads, it has to be assessed. One is the self weight of the nacelle cover itself. So on the description, we would try to iterate with, with stiffener and without stiffener, then live loads, then wind loads and snow loads. So the model development is something like this. So today's session, we'll be talking about uh, the uh, nacelle cover top. Uh, before even we jump straight to uh, doing this uh, model as is, we would try to approximate uh, something like this, a body simply made. Uh, you, Everyone uh, as a participant, you can use ANSYS uh, student version. This model is very much uh, the ANSYS can accept because of its size. There is no limitation to this. Uh, here, this has been done in such a way that uh, there's a mid surface extracted. Since the actual model is 10 mm thick, we don't want to go straight with that and do the meshing because it would be a very time consuming uh, approach when you try to mesh a 10 mm uh, solid uh, model like this. So, what is the purpose of, uh, like, as I, as you would try to do the analysis very close to this? We won't be including some, we can include the um, anemometer stand. We can exclude the anemometer stand, but then it has at the final uh, certification point of view, it is must that you are including this and you have to also show what could be the effect of stress because of the wind or the deformation because of the wind. Um, the window, it doesn't play in much crucial effect because that itself has its own uh, design uh, loads considered. So the supplier who gives us, he has tested and given to us. We don't have to again retest for this point of simulation. So we would try to do a defeaturing, okay? Like let's say for example, if uh, what I try to mean the defeature is to remove all the bolt holes, close that bolt holes, remove the windows, and just keep it to the bare minimum looking like this. So here I mentioned something like a line body. What does that mean here means is like for these, what you see here, uh, these are all just uh, stick lines which have been drawn on the surface using ANSYS design modeler. And then using that, we have an option to say that we can designate that line as a rectangle or a circle, whatever. Uh, geometry is available. So in this case, we'll be using a rectangular 60 by 40. So probably I can from here show you in the ANSYS model itself uh, screen how it would we would be going in the ANSYS environment. So I've built already the model using the uh, something which the model would look like this and I have incorporated straight away in this. I would show that how the the model from actual differs to this one. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, I hope everyone is aware uh, to our, uh, I'm assuming that everyone 
is using answers and uh, how these works linking up so in this case the model has been imported i just made the model using on autodesk uh, fusion 360 what you can see here is a simple structure which is very easy like the length is six meters which is about three meters and uh, pushing the window close to what I've shown in the drawing. Uh, and then we would try to import this in the ANSYS uh, design model of space. Now it is called space claim. And then the purpose of this is like the original body is, has got a 10 mm thickness. So I used an option called uh, uh, prepare and do the mid surface extraction. The question is, why are we doing this? The reason is that to simplify the model and to improve the faster analysis uh, methods. This method is not compulsory to be uh, done on for a very thick solid uh, uh, components. In this case, why we had to go for shell or mid surfaces? If you are going for a shell meshing, then mid surface is the best, best option. In this case, let's say this is the 10 mm thick solid. When I click mid surface, this would extract the mid layer of it and just put as a single sheet. It's much like a paper cover. But then you will you will have a doubt whether it's giving me the same results. But then when you transform it to the ANSYS mechanical environment, something like this. I can even show you step by step, like how I got all these ticks. Usually that's not the case when you try to run. The first two ticks is only you will be seeing it. So when I got this geometry inside this, you can see here this, this is how the body would look like. And basically you can define here uh, and parameterize this when it comes to P. You can parameterize if you don't want to parameterize. It is at 10 mm. You can keep varying your thickness and you don't have to worry uh, going back to uh, CAD model, increasing thickness, coming back here. Uh, without even solving too much, you can parameterize and see for various deformation what is my value. Let's say I'm not done. I'm uh, only concerned that if I do parameterize this um, student version of the answers may crash or that's the reason I'm not trying too much. But then this is how the actual model uh, and this model is also using structural tree. You can also again parameterize this as you see in the screen and change the material. In this case, um, what I've not done here is to show you a simple simulation uh, to keep it bare minimum that I've applied a structural steel and the weight is uh, and the properties at 7.85 uh, per millimeter cube and the weights are all of a normal structural steel. Going back, I didn't do anything with the coordinate system. I kept it the same. I went with the normal mesh method. I can walk you through what how to look when you are trying to mesh. Is this mesh good enough or is this mesh bad? You have a judgment. So the judgment is, for example, let me come back to the slide. As I said to you that this model was in steel, so the weight will be something around close to 2000 kgs, 1900 kgs. That's not an actual case. But then when you ch change it to um, 6 mm thick or 10 mm thick, the weight will be somewhere close to 300 kgs. So we are trying to get the weight as close as what the actual model and the actual manufacturing would look like. So. In this case, okay, and when I mentioned about meshing, this is how the uh, meshing was. I tried to get more uh, quad meshing. And then probably I may have done somewhere here. Yes, the number of uh, how to look at mesh quality is to make sure that you have something like element matrix. If this right hand side uh, quality of uh, these mesh is on the left hand side, 
the sense that if these uh, is like 0 0.13, 0 0.25, if these bars are standing here, it means that the quality is not good. What it means is that if you have to rank the poor, poor quality meshes on this side, good quality meshes is on this side. The more it is closer and beyond 0 0.15 or beyond 0 0.5, uh, the, uh, and uh, staggered towards the right hand side, the better the quality of the mesh and the better the results will be. So that is how we have to look at. Second thing is the number of nodes and elements. Uh, any, whenever, in this case, I'm just trying to show you with a single component. Uh, but then when you are, whenever you're trying to do it um, for an actual uh, case, you need to consider the adjacent bodies as well or components as well uh, to show how the effect of load transfer is taking place from this to the neighboring bodies. So usually that's the case of um, actual and uh, simulation. So going back to um, the modeling. So in this case, as I said that I've used a structural steel and then I just simply meshed without uh, too much considering what my sizing or anything is. I tried to put pyanum, but then it was not giving me a good quality mesh. And then you could also see very closely that this 10 mm thick uh, mesh has got only single elements in that. This is not good, uh, as also you can see in this window size, window close to this window location, that the mesh is like single elements in all through, uh, through thickness. So the best recommended industrial practice is like having uh, two or three uh, through, uh, through thickness elements, in the sense that this is 10 mm, at least to have 5 mm um, elements in two divisions, that is how the bare minimum uh, recommendation is. Or if you have having more than uh, uh, two elements, that is very good. So you'll have more uh, refinement to your uh, the deformation answers. So that's the important criteria. Whenever you mesh, you don't blindly follow the automatic method, but then you follow the best industrial best practices. There are so many you know, out uh, internet materials that will tell why how much elements that has to be considered through the thickness and what kind of uh, meshing is important. Uh, here, I'm not trying to tell you uh, too much about okay, different uh, mesh methods. There are automatic mesh methods, uh, body mesh, paste mesh, uh, pure hexa mesh, uh, different kinds for different situations. So I just tried to put a mesh uh, on its own we are not doing any zoning on here also because the mesh is not concentrated to any specific location. Now going on to the uh, load application, we are applying the load in single step. It means that in one single uh, force, the whole load is applied. The, uh, suppose if you are considering bolt, then the load has to be applied in three steps. That is to make sure that you had the external force applied uh, before the external force is applied, you had applied it as a tension first to the bolts, then the external force is applied, then the bolt is locked. This is how the step uh, for a bolt retention works. And you have to make sure that the contact is also proper in the bolts. So in this case, we have not considered any bolts or without any ribs. Okay. As you uh, see here, we have to fix the bottom side as a support. Here it is considering that I have suppressed the bottom LH and RH cover, and they are supporting this. So that is a fixed support. That's part of the one boundary condition. I applied a force about 2250. Why I have considered 2250? If you take uh, the in the boundary condition, one of the certification requirement was that they put 1500. Uh, force or 1.5 kilometers of force. We had to apply a safety factor. If you apply a safety factor of 1.5, that would result to 2250 as the force in actual practice in the loads. And then we applied it on the whole load as the complete surface area. And we took the deformation as a total deformation. You can also uh, do a deformation in directional. So in this case, here my global 
coordinate system tells me that the z is in this direction right and say that my direction is here and then i want to only take the deformation in that direction so what that direction here would according to the global field system give you is a plus and minus so that's not uh, of very high the what you can see is the value of what's the maximum in either of the cases how it would uh, look like so here uh, this is a zoomed in, so that's a reason. Like, if you want to get it out of the zoom, you can do that uh, to say that, okay, I to, don't want to zoom in. So, let's say true scale. The true scale would look like this, but then this is uh, the model is considered steel without ribs. Since it is steel, there is no worry about to have to put any ribs. This would have been a case if this was in a turbine which is like 20 years old. Now, that's not the actual case since we have um, the industry has transformed to fiberglass. So, you need to put a fiberglass material and see how the deformation would look like. I have not considered, probably, I can put a uh, result for a stress as well. Let's say we take principal stress or one mesh stress or even a shear stress as well. All these stresses can be considered. You can also consider to check whether your um, stress or the energy of the whole uh, load transformation is good. You can also check probably and have to uh, use this option called a moment reaction or force reaction to see that whether 2250 is coming up properly. Um, let's say at the um, fixed support the applied force, whether it is coming to the required reaction. So whatever you applied the force, it has resulted in this, uh, in this case saying that it has reflected back, saying that yes, it is 2250. As you can see here, that confirms that the force is transferring across all the in every direction, in whatever the direction of orientation the, uh, here in this case, uh, it is steel and uh, isotropic in material, so in all the directions will go and it will bump up the result as the um, uh, yeah, the equal and opposite force reaction. Now I would like to close this uh, and show you the actual FRP material, how to designate it. Uh, I hope everyone is able to follow. Uh, please give me an, uh, some kind of feedback or answer. I uh, hope anyone, if you are lost, you can, we can have a separate session to walk you through the steps. So, without doing anything in the model, as you can see here, that the model center of gravity is sitting somewhere in that red uh, ball at the center, somewhere. In this location. This is the actual location where the center of gravity of the whole nacelle cover is. Now, here in this case, there are more steps. I can, I've shown some, what I've done is, again, I've done a um, mid-surface extraction on an actual body, and the thickness I have defined is here 10. I have defined what is my uh, material also. So, Probably I can show you how to define the material also. As I showed in one of these slides, that um, we can reach. What I wanted to show you was the engineering material property that was calculated using Excel sheet. I can, I'm happy to share this as well, how the uh, fiberglass uh, uh, Young's modulus in each direction is considered the properties. They are not the same as steel. And this is how we transform it. So if you have to do it, so um, you have to use something in the uh, anisotropic elasticity or orthotropic elasticity. Uh, put that as an option. And then you will be able to define uh, in each of these uh, Young's modulus in all these directions. 
by default if you see that in structural steel that's how this comes this uh, this is how the uh, material by default would look like and you could see that the density is 7850 whereas in frp the density is 1500 and also these properties has been calculated according to this sheet where we were able to see how the young's modulus comes from the mixture formula and then you will be able to do a simple calculation here you were i was able to see a deflection of about 193 mm that is without uh, any stiffener this is how you can uh, put that in your model and see this is the actual model without the stiffeners uh, when i had the deformation from the uh, uh, theoretical calculation this was the actual deformation which you are able to find and you can do the same thing on the ansys so why is ansys required why we can't just give the excel sheet we found the deformation we have to prove to the uh, uh, certification team that uh, a safety point of view we are following the material properties as well what has been considered and uh, make it as realistic as possible so i have shown you you have the frp material data now you can go and click share you can assign okay what is your uh, material to the um, uh, to this uh, component and then now i'll come to the uh, uh, layering section that is very important how do you do this is like do a right click you have an option to Uh, insert as a layered section. Uh, this will define how your fiber lay, uh, orientation is. So let's say here when I click this, by default this one shows. Okay, I can choose the geometry here and say body coordinate system, and then it will say what's my offset. It is it is asking what is my layer from the bottom. Like let's say you are putting the layer from the floor, so it will you are trying to uh, build up the layer from the bottom to top. or top to bottom or from from the middle that's how it is or you can also do it uh, use a defined basis so in this case i went with a very simple method here i have already defined 7 mm thickness already to this uh, how do you get this is for each of these you can just even delete layers uh, when you see the initial time when i when you try to define the worksheet plus side and minus side will be there and just right click it add one layer to the top that's what how, how it works let's say in this case now i'll try to define the layer what you see here on this is uh, our achievement is 10 mm and here you see the total mass is 260 kg so we wanted to achieve uh, 10 mm so we put an additional thickness so each uh, thickness is assumed here is that you are uh, putting a fiber and a mat and a resin together and uh, they are oriented in 090 degrees so as i start increasing the uh, layering you can see here the mass has started increasing so here the reason that why you are seeing structural steel and frp uh, frp is a short name acronym is fiber reinforced plastic that's how i have named it in the engineering material and that's what you are seeing here if you don't define the engineering material there you will not see this uh, drop down in the drop down list uh, as i said that each layer is assume that uh, resin plus uh, fiber layers they they can be also defined in any angle whatever you like 45 30 usually 30 45 60 90 uh, is the orientations uh, we don't require other orientations because uh, or we are not considering chop strand mat we are just assuming that the it is a bidirectional mat and uh, simple to use if you are using a blade material then if you are uh, defining the uh, angle at which the orientation of the uh, fiber is then that will this will come in very much in use and then you can see how the uh, forces are defining in each direction so as we have defined uh, 10 mm thickness and we are now get, getting close to 371 kg 
in the initial stage i said that it was 570 uh, uh, kg that was the complete additional thickness being considered uh, the other factors that were there uh, but then we are closing getting close to this uh, a simplified model uh, the actual model is this where all these geometry definition can be applied the same way as what I'm showing you in a simplified model. Now we go to this and then we define your what is your coordinate system. You can define a specific coordinate system if you want to apply it a, a person's load here. You can you have to define a load here arbitrarily as a point concentrated load. Uh, probably four people standing, then randomly four people's four coordinates and then define the forces is applying from there. Uh, that's how the coordinate system you have to define. So the simplest way is go and define coordinate system and then you can orient it according to the direction how you want it. And that's how the use of coordinate system is. Now going to the mesh, this is a pretty simple mesh. Uh, what I've done here is I've enforced using a simple you know, option like method and define saying that okay i need it's a geometry applying it as a whole body i define it's a quad dominant or i can use a multi zone this is an option so you can choose all the three options and then you can trial it on your own how the results vary if the result vary is less than five percent then it doesn't matter in uh, what mesh it is so as i change try to change this i try to show a different uh, this one so here you can see how the mesh quality is. Uh, the average mesh quality is standing at 0 0.9 and uh, uh, most of them would be probably on the right hand side. I'm trying to see if I can show you. Uh, Yeah, so you can see here there are some mesh quality less than 0.65 in terms of uh, looking at the quality of the mesh. Most of them they are good, so there is nothing much that you have to worry of uh, until the end result. Then you go to the applying the load. As I said that in my slide, that okay, you come to applying the loads. Let me show you the different kinds of load that's uh, there. One is the live loads, wind loads, and snow and ice loads. It is very hard for me to show you each and everything, but I have, uh, what I've done is, for sake of simplicity, I have collected the results for all of them and shown how the uh, boundary condition is to be applied. So in this case, I just simply applied a, a simple uh, 22 kilonewton force. The fixed support again here is at bottom and make sure that how the force is. Uh, you can see here the force is just in one second, the whole it's a shock force. You can also apply in steps. The reason, you, even if you try to apply the step and try to define the force, the answers will be the same. You will not find difference, but for the sake of your practice, that's better yet you can check it. Uh, do not just believe, okay, I applied load, my answer is over. Uh, in the case of nacelles, since it is very simple structure, you don't have to worry much worry about um, steps. But then, when the complexity increases, like you apply bolts or you are trying to simulate the uh, main shaft or other components of the turbine, then it becomes important step. Now, here in this case, I just chose the surface as applying, uh, saying that I apply insert for uh, force. What does that remote force also means is that if you have a um, suspended mass from an, uh, a different height, that's where the remote force will come into picture. So let me try and solve this. Any feedback or any questions would you like to ask? I uh, hope everyone is able to follow this. So what you're seeing here, it is able to solve and it is giving us a deformation with this 
9 mm at the max at the center. You can also define an uh, deformation in the direction. As I said that we wanted to know in this direction, what's my uh, deformation. That's where the major majority of your uh, load is going through. So in this case also you could see that in negative wise, there is hardly the deformation is not much. But then as you can see here, I can probably this is a scaled up. Let me say this is the actual true scale deformation in an FRP. Uh, the maximum is happening here. Let's say we can put an undeformed where it looks like to where it is. Probably I can place an um, deformation video. Um, I think you can see it from here how it looks like in plane. But then if you want to go a little bit zoomed in and now you try to play, this is how it will deform when you're trying to apply a load. And first, why I'm trying asking you to go through this option is first before jumping into the actual model, uh, trying to simulate and do those things. Uh, I got the training from ANSYS itself. Uh, so whenever they taught me, not every model, they said, okay, try and do a small test before you jump to uh, your main simulation. See whether uh, your expected load is behaving as per that, or whether your expected deformation is giving. There is no actual uh, right or wrong rule uh, that, okay, this is right or this is wrong. But then you should have an uh, the judgment that how it is going to deform when the load is very high in this direction. And this tells that, okay, this confirms that whatever you are applying as a load, it is being able to transform and give you back this results. So this is how it is done without an uh, ribs. Now, if you have to apply a rib, how it will look like is, I can show you this. So this is the same model, which I've uh, already opened it. Um, what I've done is using this model, I've just drawn a line, two lines using the sketch. And then I had prepared this saying that this each line is having a shape of a rectangle. And then I defined the rectangle. And once I define and click and do that, you'll be able to see what's my uh, moment of inertia in that direction, as well as you can define what's my size. Uh, since I'm using very recently, I'm trying to know where to define the size. Then it will tell me, okay, this is close to the size which I was expecting it. If you want to change, you can change it to another one and then uh, Say, let's say you are trying to use a shape with T shape or a C channel, you can see the variation in results. So, without wasting much time, so here is how you define uh, the T section models with as a rib, and then you can play with this and see how the results will vary. Then you will come to know the difference in. Uh, the each results this is like with stiffener and without stiffener then going to live loads and uh, uh, wind loads and snow loads so as you can see here in this model that uh, i put in a simple case of uh, pressure forces which would be close to wind loads at 1.5 uh, uh, factors and then uh, see the effect on that. This will be the case uh, where for wind load, the maximum deformation were what we observed was, was coming from the sideways. Uh, but still, as we had the forces, 4 mm was very, very low. Uh, here in this case that uh, we are not considering other main uh, uh, windows or other stiffnesses that can uh, probably lessen the deformation. So there is nothing that you have to worry. The deformation here also with respect to the anemometer with stand which is stay, stays there. There is not much of a deformation like that is two of them. This is without the bolt. When you put up the bolts and put up again the load, 
you would see that this will be completely to zero or there is no deformation. So how to read this graph contour plot is location wherever you see blue to all light blue is that there is no deformation as there is nothing to worry. The location is probably where between yellow to red is the location where there is a kind of a severity. But then in this case, what you see here, the unit mm, 4 mm is a very, very bare minimum. So there is nothing that uh, to worry about with these uh, deformation of the nasal cover. So here again, you can see a distributed load has been applied. Let's say we limited, okay, this is the only surface that it has to be applied, how the behavior will be. So you can see in this the following result where the deformation went up very high because we increased the pressure a lot. And we saw that this would be a case where it would be a worst case scenario and the deformation will be higher. But then still uh, we present the situation in a such a way that how these results can overcome. For example, when you are putting up the window, it stiffens, stiffens up this whole place. So there is nothing much that you have to worry that when you place the window, the deformation will be very, very less. In this case, again, you can see here that uh, how the uh, stress behavior with respect to the stiffeners were. As it was a steel stiffener, you can see here how the uh, strength, uh, stress was. Uh, the one misses stresses were considered. Um, you should, once you had applied the distributed load, you, know, you can see that for the same result, you can extract the results and see how it is behaving. This is the expected result. There is not much of a stress on the main top nasal cover, but then the stress is being absorbed by the uh, steel. Since the steel here we uh, used was 235 megapascal uh, yield strength uh, steel, what we are seeing is the maximum what has gone in one shot of a load was 80 megapascal, which is way, way still lesser than the strength of the material itself. So with that in conclusion, this was much safe. There was no problem uh, still getting cracked or were worrying about the steel. So this is again uh, trying to illustrate what we need we put different three coordinates at three different locations and see how the uh, load effect is in and how the behavior is, is. This is how the deformation effect will show. It is trying to show somewhere from the top, but then we try to check. There was nothing that this had uh, information on uh, uh, structural steel on this anemometer. So again, here you can see specifically as I defined the, the line models. Instead, if you had chosen a solid model and you had tried to mesh, you will take a long time. So the faster way of doing this and uh, simulating is putting a line model and defining that this is your rectangular geometry and uh, check it out how it behaves. One of the most other important uh, conservation is uh, that. Uh, uh, how your uh, hand rail is also uh, behaving uh, as you see here that it is also uh, getting a st uh, stress effect and uh, the stress is also passing through that then it is a good condition yes what the forces whatever you applied is passing through and it is realizing that so this is the end of the whole uh, demo um, because of short of time to show each and every step. Uh, you can ask me anytime how you set up the layering system, how you set up the um, uh, engineering data material for uh, fiberglass and what all to look at in results. So in this case, this was a very, very simple method. But then what I had shown you uh, here was from an actual uh, practical uh, certification report that went to uh, for certification and these models were in actual practice implemented in real life so this ends the demo session of how the uh, uh, ANSYS is utilized and the options are available with ANSYS and how do we verify the results that we can
Um, the only one thing is that um, what I would uh, suggest based on my experience with ANSYS is like, do not believe that ANSYS or any simulation software is the only tool that uh, you have to depend for anything. Like when you go to join companies, it is not that they will give you uh, an easy straight go license because every license is a cost to the company and also cost to you to use it. The time you spend to utilize the uh, software. The best uh, suggestion I would say is try to approximate um, as much as on a uh, Excel sheet calculation or a manual calculation to first to come to your uh, theory that what you are trying to achieve. You cannot achieve a near perfect, but then what even answers or any finite element is that it will only give you a 90-95% close results. But when complexity increases, uh, you may sometimes get uh, straight away what you are trying to uh, get an answer out of the um, methods. So earlier before finite element was also uh, got into technology progression. Uh, people only used uh, extensive hand calculation method or Excel sheet calculation method to uh, find the design solutions. Um, Amos? Uh, Amos? Uh, okay, thank you, Amos. Uh, before that, I have a small doubts, uh, bro. Uh, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Uh, oh, first one is uh, you have uh, shown some um, elastic constant calculations, sir. Yeah. Uh, for orthotropic uh, elastic constant. Yes. Actually, all these constant values are available in the ANSYS library or uh, you, you have calculated. Uh, so I had to calculate it because when I was doing it my first time, I didn't know what was the thickness, what I'm going to use. Because yes. industry, uh, like I had to speak with competitors, try and get to know because no one would give these data outside as easy. So yes, yes, I had yes. fortunately a colleague who, had who was working in um, blade design. So that they were calculating uh, using this uh, Halpensai equation and uh, trying to uh, use an uh, theory theoretical calculation and then prove it on ANSYS. So they were using uh, the old ANSYS classic method to uh, do it. And uh, this was shared. They taught me how to use it. And then I did the same thing on the uh, nasal cover to see that whether I was getting the same deformation which I anticipated. Like without the stiffener, it was uh, deforming to 200 mm. So you have to prove that. If you try to prove it using Euler uh, um, Euler being theory, you will, you will not get that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, then so, uh, one, one more uh, one more yeah. thing is uh, when you model these uh, FRP, uh, yeah. you added ten layers, you no, know, sir? Yeah. Correct. For e each layer, you are given fiber orientation the angle also. Yes, correct. Uh, uh, actually, you have given 0, 90, 0, 90, like that. Right. For, uh, for each layer, you have to give 0 or uh, 90, sir, for, because you have... Actually, uh, each layer is 0, 90 orientation itself. But then here, what we have considered is a worst case scenario. Uh, but when, when you are trying to sandwich, it will come to that level. Uh, OK. Uh, actually, yeah. Yes. Sir. Um, Actually, um, the material is uh, in fabric type, sir, woven fabric uh, nature. Yes, but by the uh, fabric type. By direction, okay. But uh, when you model it, we have to give 0, 90 an alternate layer, right, sir? Yeah, you can also, like, in this case, like, what I have done is um, uh, to uh, faster the results that, uh, like, even the thickness need not to be 1 mm. You can define the first 0 0.5 mm as 0, the second 0 0.5 mm as 90. And then that is one mm. That's how, in actual, to be more close, precise, the uh, layering should be. Okay. Like in one single one mm layer itself, it is zero ninety uh, uh, warp and rest uh, both the directions the layers are. Oh. Yeah. Okay, sir. So for the sake of simplicity, you. I had to build it at like this and show it like that. But okay, then if you. Uh, uh, use uh, for example in blade uh, design 
they go exactly how the uh, layering is uh thank because uh, our uh, students are doing some project in the frp uh, yes. we, we can ask them to model uh, because yes. uh, we have shown one practical demo it will be very useful for them right. uh, we'll ask we them to uh, play around with this uh, trying to say within the 1 mm how uh, if we are putting both the directions or changing the direction how the results are and uh, how the fiber orientation forces are playing that's how it is up to each individual to um, dig more and see how the results are varying yes sir so thank you sir thank you very yes. much so yes, ramos yes ah uh, uh, yes so i'm behalf of uh, department of mechanical engineering uh, panimal institute of technology and uh, Uh, IST student chapter. Uh, I thank uh, uh, Dr. Partha Sarathi uh, for give uh, his wonderful uh, lecture on uh, the lecture as well as the uh, demonstration in ANSYS. So uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Uh, thanks thank for you, taking your time, and uh, uh, I hope uh, this was your expectation. What I have tried to show. Uh, sure, sir. Sure. If you have any time, my any questions, please, please, we can please, we will ask. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, oh, it's still nine o'clock only. Nine ten. Yeah. Yeah. Right. From my personal uh, perspective, this experience of what I've shown here in one hour, it took me almost like three months to come to the stage to like, okay, if I'm defining what's my thickness, I have to go to each and every detail. What's my thickness of my bolts? What what size am I choosing? each and everything had to be defined by myself so i had to go and get consultation because this information is not available just like a free like a dictionary so it was through definitely through an experience i had good experience i was fortunate that my company where i started in a small startup company i uh, had a lot of exposure where they gave me time to uh, play around the uh, modeling and uh, do the designing Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. It just uh, it was very informative and very learning session. So I really enjoyed it. So there is any feedback form or any other information which we need to give us. anything where we give feedback so uh, where should i see in a call meeting yes thank you i got it good 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 thank you yeah thank Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miss Dr. Sadar Jaid and Anthony was here. Thank you. We are from Maritime College. Thank you. 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 Thank and i would like to appreciate only it was very informative and very practical presentation we have benefited a lot out of it i'm also from oman in my time college uh, with sir oh, jamal welcome dr assalam alaikum assalam alaikum assalam thank you sir thank you for uh, for the feedback um, there will be a lot uh, in terms of practicality of how to use uh, 
answers and uh, bridge your theoretical knowledge. Um, just I'm trying to give as much as knowledge possible. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. We'll, we'll be there. Yes, yes, we have done that, sir. We'll be there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, fine. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.